Today I'm announcing a change to my channel. I've been doing YouTube for two years now, and since then I've amassed over 100 videos. I have over 160 subscribers, which I'm thankful for each and every one of you. It means so much to me. Um, I started this channel because I simply wanted to help others. I, you know, I started following uh, other YouTubers for you know about a year or so before I started my channel and I was like man I've learned so much and it's helped me so much and I felt like I myself could give a lot to others and help them learn and grow so that was a big part of it that was a big passion of mine also I had a big fear of public speaking so this was my way of putting myself out there uh, to help myself grow in that area and I feel I've grown a lot because I look at my older videos compared to now I've gained so much confidence when I go out there and have you know business networking situations I'm so much more confident I'm much more well spoken for myself uh, so it's helped me a lot as well um, but when I started this you know I had the two big passions of mine finance and fitness um, you know finance as just since even since I was a little kid I was the one that saved my money you know I, I knew the value of not taking out loans. I learned early on just about, you know, investing in everything finance-wise. And fitness-wise, you know, I was overweight when I was young and I made a decision, I don't want to be that person when I get older. I want to make the change now. So ever since then, I focus on health and fitness. So I brought these two to the channel because I felt these were two areas that I had great knowledge in that I can share and help others. But I knew early on that I told myself, I'm gonna let this channel, the viewers, kind of guide where this channel goes. And I noticed that the financial side of this channel is the one that gets the attention, right? It gets the views, the comments, the likes. And so I have made the decision to drop off the fitness part of my channel and it's just gonna be focusing on finance. I think that that's better to focus on one thing one big topic and do it justice then try to juggle both that's just my opinion um, and i hope you guys are going to like this change so the new name is mark arnold's finance and i'm dropping off the and fitness part um, but i just felt like i can't do two topics big topics like that justice there's going to be people that just want the fitness and just want the finance and very few that will want the crossover so i made this decision i know a great graphic designer so they uh, created a new intro for my video, so uh, check it out right now. Let me know what you think. So what do you guys think of that? I think it's pretty cool. He did an excellent job. Um, so, you know, I'm still going to keep up my old fitness videos for people to, you know, go back and look at. But now I'm going to focus on finance because the one thing that, you know, uh, kind of hurts is seeing people feel like, they're defeated and they can't become wealthy, right? They're in these situations that they feel they'll never get out of, but that's not true. You can get out of those situations. All it takes is you getting started and just being dedicated towards it, right? Just continuously learning. And so a channel like this, I feel is gonna help you. I am subscribed to about five different financial channels that I, you know, have really helped me a lot. And I like to get you know multiple views because that's how you learn you can't just listen to one person so i hope you choose to subscribe to my channel and make me one of those options um, it'd mean a lot to me and i do put out diverse content quality content i'm growing myself so i'm human so i'm going to make mistakes but i think that's the value of my channels i'm very transparent i'm going to show you the good and the bad because you know when you make a mistake that's where you learn and i'm going to share that with you guys too so if you're in that situation where you feel you can't become wealthy, you can become wealthy. And I'm gonna show you my portfolio here in a little bit and hopefully this, that inspires you. I really like this saying and it's become my life motto and that's progress, not perfection. Because if you chase perfection, it's gonna let you down because there's no such thing. Instead, focus on progress, continuously improving and that's where you're really gonna shine. Um, so I appreciate all my viewers. Um, I appreciate the feedback that you guys give me. Um, so keep that up. Thank you for letting me know where I need to improve and where I'm doing great in. It means a lot to me and it helps the channel and others that are viewing it. So let's start this new channel with uh, a look into my portfolio. So I'm going to show you the performance of it. I'm going to go over my three biggest uh, losers and my three biggest winners and some other fun stuff. So first of all, at the end of 2021, my portfolio was up 23.29% or a $6,200 gain. Now, 
If you invested anywhere from about early 2020 after the pandemic hit to the end of 2021, it was pretty much easy money could be made in the market. But then now in the beginning of 2022, we've had some volatility. This is the first time a lot of investors have experienced this and a lot of them chose fear and they sold out of their positions. So at my lowest this year, uh, at all time in my portfolio, I dropped from a 23.29% down to a 9%. So I was only up $1,900. So I lost over $4,000 in value in my portfolio, but I didn't let that deter me. I actually buckled down and I knew that this just means things are at better valuations and I bought heavily. So now, as of March 29th, I am up 15.22% or a little over $5,000 in my portfolio. So I gained a lot of that back. And that just goes to show you that investing really is about being disciplined and about the long term. You know, you can't focus on, you know, the emotions of it or let the news or others, you know, put fear in you and sell out. I've seen that happen too many times where people sell out and they regret it because then the stock market rebounds, it recovers like it always has, and they lose out on money. So I'm very happy with this performance. Um, now let's go over my three biggest losers. So quickly, in third place is Facebook. It's at a ne uh, negative 12.45%, so I've lost $424.97. Facebook to me is a long-term play. I think it's gonna rebound just fine. I've had videos on it, so be sure to check it out. In second place is AT&T. I'm down 19.74% or $354. AT&T has struggled for years. This is a company I got into early on when I was investing uh, two years ago. So I wasn't as knowledgeable and I got into it because I had a high dividend. I probably wouldn't have got into it if I knew what I knew now. But I do think they're doing good things. They're, I want new shares of this new Warner Bros. Discovery Company and they're going to be focusing on paying down their debt, which is I think their biggest negative. So I think AT&T will turn around and at some point I'll be in the green. Now my number one biggest loser is Tattooed Chef. This is a plant-based food company and I am down 21.84% or $251.85. It's not as big of a position in my portfolio but it's, I'm going by percentages and it's uh, lost me the most money percentage-wise. So Tattooed Chef is a new company uh, but I am gonna hold on to this company because I think long-term, this company is doing uh, great things now that will benefit it later. It's expanding massively into grocery stores. It's in an, a sec sector that I believe is gonna grow uh, exponentially high over the next couple decades, and that's you know kind of the plant-based food diets. Uh, so I'm gonna hold on to this one and see what happens. Um, now my three biggest winners. In third place is DuPont. They mainly focus on chemicals. Uh, but they're up 53.6%, so I've made $163.32. Uh, it's only about a 1.2% um, part uh, allocation part to my portfolio, so not much, but it's done very well for me. Uh, next in line is Bank of America. It's up 67.27%, or $471.69. Bank of America is just, a, you know, to me, a very solid financial pick uh, for a bank and a lot of big companies use it. The company I work for does, so I utilize it every day and I really like the products. Now my number one biggest winner is AbbVie. AbbVie is a pharmaceuticals company. They deal a lot with you know uh, coming up with new drugs and treatments and it's up 78.91% or $643.77. So it's done excellent for me. I will keep this company unless if it gets uh, really, you know, my gains get really big then I might uh, cut it in half, take some of those gains and allocate them somewhere else. But those are my three biggest losers and winners. So my three biggest losers, it comes out to a $1,030.82 loss. My three biggest winners comes out to $1,278.78 in the green. So net, I'm in the green, $247.96 between my three biggest winners and losers. That to me reflects a good portfolio everyone's gonna have losers. No one's a perfect stock picker. But if you're in quality di uh, companies and you're diversified, uh, have a diversified portfolio, long-term, you should be in the green. Your good companies should outweigh the ones that didn't do so well. Uh, so I also want to point out my biggest position, which is Microsoft. This one is up 34.54% and I've made $1,214.70 in gains. Uh, so. That one to me is one of my favorite holdings and I plan on keeping this one long-term. 
uh, probably the rest of my life. Um, but this just goes to show you that, you know, you have to do homework on these stocks. You have to have your convictions and not just go off of someone else because some of the ones I went off of someone else are the ones that are doing the poorest. The ones that I researched had my convictions on are the ones that are doing the best. So now let's look at my portfolio value. Right now, my portfolio, the market value is $38,200. That's what my portfolio is worth as of March 29th. I'm going to say this. I've been investing for two years and two months. If you would have told me two years ago that I would have nearly $40,000 in investments in stocks, I would think you're crazy. Um, but this just goes to show you the power of investing and the power of reinvesting because a lot of these companies pay me dividends and I put them right back in buying more shares of these companies. And that creates a snowball effect. So I hope this $40,000 in another two years is going to be over $100,000. So let's see if I can reach that goal. Now, if back two years ago I chose not to invest my money, I wouldn't have nearly $40,000 right now because I guarantee you I would have spent most of it. I would have, you know, gained more expenses in my life um, and I probably would have put some of it in savings. Now, a savings account does not pay you very much, much interest, so you're actually losing value in your money. Where the stock market, you're beating inflation if, you're, if you have a good portfolio. I'm at 15.22% right now. That's definitely beating these high inflations of 8% right now. Not only that, but I want to show you this chart just to show you how I'm kind of allocated. You know, I want to be transparent, obviously. So if we look at this chart, this is showing you what um, kind of my allocation is between the different sectors. You'll see I'm very bullish on technology. Um, and then I also really love the real estate sector. The healthcare sector, I think, is, you know, always going to be a high growth sector because, you know, the more people, the more population grows and people age, the more there's going to be a need for you know, kind of these drugs to help with different ailments um, and so on and so forth. Different treatments, different solutions to health problems. Also financials, I'm really big on. I just think that's something that's going to grow uh, massively. People will continue to educate themselves and learn about finance. Um, second to the, the, the right, the end, I, it says dividend equity. That's my ETF for uh, SCHD. That's my dividend growth ETF. That one I do want to increase quite a bit. So I'm going to focus on that, but this is just to show you kind of, you know, where I'm at with my allocation in the market. Um, so next, I want to also discuss, not only is my value in my portfolio near 40000 but I'm now, I also get dividends. Yes, I get dividends. I invest in these companies and they reward me with dividends. This is called passive income, not active income. Active income is where you work hard for your money. Passive income is your money working hard for you. I literally put buy a share of Microsoft and I don't have to do nothing and they pay me. Um, I'm going to show you some stats on my Microsoft uh, company here in a minute, but look at this. So far this year, I've made $215.94. But since I began investing two years and two months ago, I've made over $1,300. And right now, it's projected that I will be making over $1,000 a year in dividends, which is over 100 bucks a month, just a little over 100 bucks. 100 bucks a month can pay for your gas bill, your electric bill. It could pay for all your subscriptions plus help out with groceries or it could pay, out, pay a week in groceries. There's a lot that $100 can do a month that I'm, I've already reached. So I'm excited to see where it continues to grow. And this is that snowball effect. This is that snowball effect happening and each year I'm going to make more and more in dividends because, you know, we're going to take a look at Microsoft, okay? So when I first started investing in 2020, Microsoft, they pay quarterly. So in March, they paid me 51 cents in 2020. Now let's look at the next year. In 2021, in March, I got paid $3.92. And then just now in 2022 in March, I got paid $8.68. Um, in dividends from Microsoft. Now, that is to, not to say that I haven't been adding to that position. That is helping those dividends grow. But a good quality company with good cash flow and good financials is going to increase that dividend every year. So even if I stopped buying into Microsoft right now, my dividends from them would increase every year because they raise it every year. And that's the power of investing. 
Not only is your money growing in these stocks, the dividends that you're getting from them is growing as well. So, you know, this is just creating more security for me. It's um, creating, uh, you know, more freedom for me and it can for you too. You just have to get started. It's not as scary as it looks. You know, you don't have to be the smartest person in the room. You just have to put the work in. And I hope that my portfolio is an inspiration to you guys who might be on that fence of thinking to invest, to start investing, start learning, right? You, there's nothing wrong with putting in a few hundred bucks and then another couple hundred bucks and then, you know, just keep on going. You're going to learn along the way and a channel like this will help you as well as others too. So find yourself some quality channels to follow, start investing, start learning. Um, start learning about other topics besides investing that are financial related like debt, um, inflation, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. It's all going to help you become wealthy long term. You can do it. It might seem impossible right now, but it did to me two years ago and look where I'm at. I just put money consistently every paycheck and I let my money grow and the dividends I get paid, I reinvest. So I really hope this... Um, inspires you. I really hope you guys like the change to my channel that I'll be focusing on just finance now. Let me know what you think of this, all this. And um, I look forward to providing a lot more content to you guys in the coming weeks, months, and years. I want to be in this for the long term so you guys can follow me and be a part of this journey. And I'm very grateful for all of you out there and have a great day and we'll see you next time on Mark's Finance.